that voice, that that itch, that scratch, whatever whatever you want to call it, is effectively gone now. Not only is it gone, but it's been replaced with a voice that says, you can actually do more. You can go harder That's than it. what the project That's it. was. That's it. You can do more. Exactly. Right. Find the next thing now. What could right. I do even harder, more extreme? Exactly. I like it. <laughs> Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine, entrepreneur and instructor of The Project. Welcome to The Project Show. This show is for men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith so they could finally discover true fulfillment in their lives. Discovering this through physical, mental, and emotional hardships and sacrifice so they can become even better husbands, fathers, entrepreneurs, leaders, and men. I want to welcome our guest today, a project graduate of class 006, Matthew White. What's going on? Thanks for coming. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Just you for having tell me. Tell us about yourself. Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, my name is Matthew White. I was part of class 006. Um, I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Currently, right now, I reside in... Uh, did I say Albuquerque? I think I said Albuquerque. Uh, I live in Carlsbad right now. I work for the city. Uh, I'm a firefighter for the city of Carlsbad, New Mexico. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. So let's let's get right to it. What was it about the project? Like, what made you join the project? You're a, you're a firefighter. You also do paramedic there too. Is yes, that, sir. Okay, awesome. So it's it's not you don't have right now your own business or anything like that, right? You're, no, sir. You're a firefighter out in New Mexico. The project. A lot of times you think, and we get people say, "Oh, I'm not a business owner. I'm not. I don't. I don't need to do that. I'm not a business owner." It's obviously not for business owners. You don't need to, to be a business owner to be a better husband, better father, all that stuff. What, is the, what was your reason for even joining? Why did you even get registered? Why did it intrigue you? Why did you get interested in it? What, what made you want to get become part of it? Um, I initially um, found out about the project through one of the instructors, Instructor Ray. And um, I initially, I figured it would be a, a good way for me to enhance my leadership. Um, and then once I started learning more about it and uh, the philosophy of the project with the four F-bombs, um, I realized that, um, I mean, even, even before, right, we can always be better men, I think. Even even at our current state, mm -hmm. no matter how good we are, we can always be better. So um, I, I knew that I needed to be a better husband, a better father. I can always do better and be better in those areas of my life. And the project, I felt, was going to help me um, to achieve more potential in those areas uh, of my life. What were some of the areas specifically that you felt like maybe you were struggling with or you really needed some, not, you didn't just need to become even better. You just needed to get your shit together, unfuck yourself or what struggles, roadblocks, adversities were you going through that you felt like you can, the project was going to be able to help you with? Uh, so one, one area that I, that I really wanted to improve on was my anger issues and, and my anger problems. Um, I'm not real good at conflict because I've never been a verbal conflict kind of guy. It's punch always, in the face. It solves right, everything, right? Right. So that's it's very good at conflict. That's, so well, you have conflict, you it, resolve it, you punch them in the fucking face. That's, and, that's, that's how I always, I mean, that's how I grew up. That's how I was taught from my dad um, was you know, hit a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Um, so I've never been, I've never been good at, at verbal confrontation. It was always like, hey, my thought process was, why are we going to, fucking scream and yell and shout at each other. Let's just get it on. You know what I mean? Um, but I felt like the project would help me to maybe de-escalate from that and learn how to um, handle verbal conflict better, um, which is kind of a part of the project that, that we that we went through is, you know, calling somebody out and having to verbally go through those, those altercations without the physical violence attached. Yeah, 100%. To it. There's times you had to approach another man like right. men, men don't have it often these days they're right. they'll go straight to fighting and as much as fun as that can be and that's the way we want to do it sometimes that's not going to get you ahead in life it's not going to eat a week going to get you in fucking jail it's going to ruin your career yeah and i so, can't afford that so exactly exactly so and the project put you on the spot several times where you had to go stand face to face with another man and and call him out on his bullshit or have another man come to you and look you in the eyes and it never happens in the real world and that's why we put you in those spots where right. you're transmitting and receiving feedback and that's right. a huge breakthrough that was probably a, a pretty pretty deep moments for you to go through that kind of stuff without being able to react the way you normally would react it it was it was especially because you know in the in the environment that i work in a uh, fire department and it's a it's a smaller department we have about a hundred guys so everybody's got like or or tries to have this 
alpha personality, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. times we have these these overcompensating betas in there that try to to come off like that. And They're so watching it, just say their fucking so name. For me, just say their name. <laughs> yeah. So for me, um, that's where I want to go with them. But I I knew that the project was was going to give me that opportunity to try to handle those those confrontations better without going to physical violence. Because like I said, I have a family, I have a career, and I can't lose that over somebody that's not even worth it. Mm -hmm. I remember in the Marine Corps one time, there was like this five foot nothing. He was like a staff sergeant or something. I was like a nobody, a little private or whatever. And you, the same thing you're saying, they just will let that rank get to their head. And I remember telling them, and it's not the right way to do it. it the same thing, I had similar problems. I told them, listen, that, that rank on your shoulder is not going to help you when I'm fucking whooping your ass. Right. So you just watch, watch right. it. But that's not the way to go about things. It just made me think of that. So when you, when you started getting ready for the product, you started thinking about joining, what were some of the, maybe the, the fears or doubts you had about actually joining the program, about actually getting started? Of it? Anything, anything that comes to mind? Um, I remember having a conversation with, with uh, Ray because he was, he was um, before he turned me on to you and then we had our conversations about mm -hmm. um, signing up and, and the actual financial portion of the project, right? Because um, that was the literally the only concern that I had was how am I going to pay for it? Um, we know it's expensive, but like I tell people, what's your life worth? After going through it, after going through it and getting back what I've gotten, from and and I'm the the F and G right. I'm the fucking new guy. Everything that I've gotten back from being part of the Brotherhood already. How do you put a price? You you don't you you can't put a price tag on that. So, you know, even even the guys that I've tried to bring into the Brotherhood and go through the project like I did, they're like, how much does it cost? And I'm like, how much is your fucking life worth? Well, that's the first question someone asks. Oh, that, that's that's not the right question to ask. It's right. how how is this going to help? How can I? become better at right. this and this and this. How is right. it will help at least ask those type of questions? Exactly. Not how much does it cost. If, right. it, if it costs 10 cents, but it's going to give you a pile of shit, who cares? But right. if it costs a million dollars, but it's going to give you $10 million it's worth of value. It's going to off. Then exactly. exactly. Awesome. So, and, and you're in the fire department. I'm, I'm guessing in New Mexico, they're not paying two, $3 million a year in no, the fire department. I wish they were. Yeah, I They, bet. they I take bet. about half. You deserve it. You deserve yeah, to right. get, <laughs> firefighters deserve right. to get paid that shit, but that's besides this point. So, I appreciate it. So, you you found a way to make these payments and get it done. Do whatever you have to do to, to make it happen because we we'll, we'll have guys who are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year that eh, it's just too expensive. I can't put that in my budget right now, and they'll make all kinds it's of bullshit. excuses. You found a way it's to bullshit. do it. It's bullshit. It is. It is. It's calling it straight what it is. It's bullshit. So you found a way to do it. A firefighter in New Mexico and found a way to, to get it get it done. If which you is, which if is awesome. you if you want it bad enough, and um, I know for like like Ray says right. Um, we get these guys that do pushes with us every Saturday, right? I want to be a Navy SEAL. I want this. I want that, right? Like my mom told me growing up, want in one hand and shit in the other and see which one fills up faster. <laughs> she used to always tell me that shit as a kid, 10 years old. To want in one hand and the other, see which one fills up faster. You got to need it. I needed it. Mm -hmm. So I found a way to fucking come up with the money that I needed to pay to for it to fucking get my ass out here and get it done. Good stuff. Good stuff. So one, all right. So you got ready. So you figured out you're gonna you're gonna make this. You're gonna figure out how to pay for it. You know you need this. You don't just want it. You fucking need this. What was your preparation phase like? Because you were you had a, a good few months before your class started. How did you prepare for it mentally, physically, emotionally? What was your what did your preparation look like? So initially, um, I had. I want to say our class was supposed to be in September, for class six, and I want to say I signed up in July. Um, so I had like eight weeks. I think I remember it was like eight weeks. Exactly. Now, of course, for my job, uh, I have to stay my philosophy for staying in shape. Anyway, I got to be a big old, uh, hairy chested fireman. Right. So most of my training is, is, um, I, I do do a lot of body weight training. Most of my training is a lot of power though. And as heavy fucking shit as I can lift on mm -hmm. the big compound movements. That's just, it's just. I've changed, right? Because I used to box for a long time. My my last competition actually was in 2011 at Fort Medell Casino in Arizona. I fought at 175. For a boxer, that's like fucking humongous, right? But for a human being, to me, that's not that big, right? Mm -hmm. um, but going into the fire department, I knew where I needed to go. I needed to be fucking strong, and I needed to have anaerobic capacity for about 20 minutes, which takes me to burn through a bottle on a fire scene if I'm working my ass off. But I knew that going into the project, I was like, this is going to take some fucking aerobic endurance as well. 
Like I'm gonna need to be able to function for long mm -hmm. periods of time, not just fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So I really upped my running and rowing, like a lot, a lot, a lot. I still kept lifting heavy shit, but I upped my, my aerobic capacity and anaerobic capacity. I used the project app that you guys designed um, with those workouts, um, instructor Aaron, instructor Ray, uh, instructor Steve, um, put workouts on the, the project app, I use that. Um, I've, I've been following Mark Devine since probably 2007 or eight, maybe. Um, so I use a lot of the seal fit workouts, which are, which are fucking brutal. I don't know if you've ever done them, mm -hmm. but there can yeah. be fucking pretty brutal. Um, so I, and I just, you know, and I'm also the kind of guy that's like, if anybody's like, Hey bro, you want to try this in fitness? Fuck yeah, let's do it. Why not? Mm -hmm. Why not? Cause it's not going to hurt me. It can only help me. Right. Anything that can get me in better shape. Let's do it. And you attended most of the weekly workout. We had the live weekly yes, workouts sir. on Zoom. On Thursdays. You were on there pretty much every week. I don't know, you missed maybe a couple, if, if that. How, how'd you make that happen? I'm sure you have a busy schedule. You're working at the fire department. Yeah. Um, you know, even, even when I'm at the firehouse. So, um, you know, we don't, run, we don't run continuous calls. It don't matter where, what city you fucking work in and how busy you are. Mm -hmm. You never run continuous calls. Um, you can always eke out fucking time. People don't, also don't understand that, right? You you can eke out a fucking hour out of your day. That's that's the point I was getting to at. To improve yourself. Someone could, you could have just said, well, I'm on shift. I can't do it. I can't come yeah, in. Yeah, make some all. bullshit yeah. excuse or something like that and be like, nah, yeah. you know, screw that. No, no, no. That To me, that's not commitment. Mm -hmm. I made a fucking commitment not only to myself but to you guys. You guys are, you guys are expecting and entrusting me to show up the best fucking possible – candidate that you guys have ever seen like that's my mindset right show up and be the best motherfucker these guys have ever seen i like it i like it that's 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 what goes through my head so if i'm if i'm sitting there bullshitting and be like nah you know what whining or some bullshit like that making excuses for why i'm on shift and i can't work. what if i what if we have a rough night what if we get our asses kicked on calls mm -hmm. fuck that's all the time anyway so who gives a shit you know what i mean and you know i don't know i don't know I'm, I, I get. I can, no, that's, I, no, I, I hear you. I like it. I, I like get it. pretty. That's, I can get that's, pretty that's, fucking. Listen, that's what people need to hear out there because yeah. we, we get the excuses that they're they're on shift. They don't have time. Everyone's got the fucking time. You could always figure Absolutely. it out. You always can make it happen. So let's so let's now now you make it into the project. Let's talk let's talk about the good stuff, the fun stuff. What's from your experience? What was the, what was the something that you liked the least? Something that you didn't <laughs> enjoy as much as something else, or your least favorite evolution, event, task, or something you actually didn't enjoy too much during the during the process. So am I am I free to talk about my the, the least favorite evolution? You can get into it. If we get too much into details, I'll cut you off because we do want to keep things, you know, a semi, little bit. Yeah, semi, so okay. yeah, go ahead. Um, the dash. Okay, um, yeah, they say, know that. We'll put that out there. So, okay, yeah. so um, I, maybe I won't delve. Um, oh, I was the one we're, watching your break. No, we. They, I know, and, and, you, the and you single-handedly pulled me through it because I would start, you know, hyperventilating. Um, and I'm not claustrophobic at all. I'm a, I'm a fireman. I go through fucking SCBA mazes, entanglements and shit. It wasn't claustrophobia. It was something about the gas exchange of, of not being able to, to breathe in a little bubble, right? Because the, 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 the closeness of everything, I was fine. It was... I put a little more dirt. I had... Because we each watched two graves... Everyone else sprinkles a little on there. I'm like, fuck that. I'm buried. They, they got to get the full it. effect. They yeah, got to go all in. I want, they gotta... Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I was expecting. Um, and before it, I actually had my wife do it to me in, in my own backyard, which she got a fucking kick out of because she was like, holy oh, shit. Sure. This You're is lucky she player. dug you out. Not only that, and fucking God's honest truth, true story. On a stack of Bibles, I put it. I got three cops that live on my street. One of the motherfuckers is literally my next door neighbor. We share a fence. And she's like, this motherfucker's going to come out into the backyard and see me doing this to you. <laughs> what the fuck? And I'm like, just go, just do it. The first time we ever did that evolution, we were back, we were in the, in the spot where we do it. And it's always dead back there. We do that at like two in the morning. Right. We had, this is the first time we did it. We just started doing it. The guys are just getting into their graves. This fucking cop car pulls out back there, <laughs> back on that runway where we do it, or like in the it. secret location. Right. And he starts going real slow. We're like, fuck, this is going to ruin the whole thing. Like, they're, what the fuck? Like, they're not going to listen to us. They're going to be like, these guys, they're taking us all in. What the fuck? This motherfucker went slow. He looked over like lights were shining. He fucking took off. He's like, he's like, I don't even want, <laughs> want the no paperwork. I don't want to know what's going on. I don't want to end up in that grave. I'm fucking getting <laughs> out of here. He took off. We never heard from him again. No problems. Like Good stuff. Good I like stuff. It. I like it. So that, that, was my, that was my least evolution. My least favorite evolution. I'm sorry. Um, but again, I give... Uh, 
you know, I, I don't even give credit for myself for hanging through it. I give you credit because you kept me going uh, because, you know. I heard I, you huffing and puffing. I'm right. like, I don't want to have to carry this big motherfucker out of here because right. well, he's fucking heavy. But you would say, hey, you all right? I'm good. Okay, cool. Hang in there. You got one or two minutes left, right? And then three minutes would pass and you're like, hey, you all right? I'm good. I'm good. I just, I'm all right. I don't know how much longer I can go, but I'm good. Hey, hang in there, bro. You only got one or two more minutes left. And then another three minutes later, hey, you all right? And it just it just kept going until it was over. So, I mean, I owe you a lot of credit for bringing me fucking through that. And I just want to have to carry your big ass carcass out of there. I'm like, fuck, hey, it's like three in the morning. Whatever the motivation Been up all fucking is, though. day. I don't want to carry this big motherfucker out of here. I hear him wheezing in there and shit like, wake up, motherfucker. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So then, let's let's shift gears. What are some of the mo- what are some of the moments where you went through that kind of suck, but in hindsight, you're like, you know what? That was just fucking fun. That was one of the most fun experiences I had. What were some things that stand out that were just funny or funny moments or stories that, that if anything stands out that, well, that you think back on? Um, I think you know we already kind of touched on on you know combatives is always the best for me. It's always the funnest, right? That Which was, you was, actually broke your hand, I think, the first day, I did. right? And I still actually can't even put, like, push-ups. I got to do them on fucking dumbbells because I got to keep my wrist neutral because putting weight through the joint this way. But wait a minute, you broke your hand during the project? Hurts. Mm-hmm. Like, like, first six day. Out, like six hours For in. a few hours in. So you should have just went home. I mean, medically, you should have just been went home, right? No. You could have. You could have. You had a broken hand. I mean, come on. That's extreme. Nope. That's not, a, that's not extreme. <laughs> I didn't have a fucking bone sticking out of my body. That's not what if you did? Wrap it up. <laughs> Put some fucking duct tape on that motherfucker and wrap let's it keep up. going. Yep, wrap I remember it up. that you, we just had to keep duct taping your fucking hand back together and you just kept going at it. And there were and even I even times. I had to do combatives two, two more times. I was going to say, there were times to go again and, and your hand was it's like a bowling ball on top of your hand yeah. at one point. It looked like a fucking, yeah, it looked like a, like a mitt. I remember coming up to you. It looked waxy. I remember coming <laughs> to you and asking fake. you, and I knew what the answer was going to be, but I said, you know, we still got to go do that again a little bit later. And your shit was fucking swollen and i don't know if you remember your answer or not but you're like fuck it tape it up fuck somebody up <laughs> let's do it that's let's it. do it that's it i like it i like it so then what were some of your favorite things other than that uh, what are some of the other favorite moments you have that stand out that you just just had fucking fun with that you just realized it's a privilege <laughs> to be doing this uh, the entire week the entire week was was like I don't know, man. I, I was it, was it was like having a chub for a week fucking straight. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was fucking. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Even the, even the dash in in the fact that it was my least favorite evolution. It still was was powerful. Um, there's a video out there too um, that that the that the uh, videographers put together, and you see me come out of the fucking bag, and I'm like, and I got this little fucking bitch face on because. <laughs> fuck you know what i mean like and then i kind of sat there after that after that frame shown um i kind of sat there for a minute and it was like wow just just thinking about you know if this was if this was real you know i, I really tried to get into it because i knew that it was going to be my least favorite mm-hmm. evolution so i know that that's the evolution that i needed to fucking lean most. into it to get the most right. out of it and so i just tried to really live in that fucking space you know where where bedros was like you know this is this is real if you were to fucking die and, and be buried right how the fuck, what are they going to say about you at your funeral? What, what, how's your eulogy going to read? And it was just, that was just, was fucking huge for me, man. Especially when I start thinking about my wife and my kids and how important and special they are to me. What are they going to think about me? You know what I mean? Um, so, but I mean, the entire week, as soon, I mean, as soon as, we, as soon as we left graduation dinner, it was like, wow. It was, it was weird because like right after graduation dinner, it was like, wait a minute, that's fucking, that's it? Like, I want more. I want more. Let's fucking go back to the fucking compound. Let me put my fucking t-shirt and my fucking wet shorts and my wet shoes and socks back on and let's fucking keep going. Hell yeah, just I could, keep shit, I could live in the project. I could yeah, live just, in it. let's I just live keep fucking it. going. I, I hear you. Just, that's a, imagine it. when you could live your, if you could live your life like that, just everyday life out there, you're living with, things are going fucked up, you think everything's so bad, boo-hoo, poor fucking little me. Mm-hmm. If you could take those situations where you're fucking buried alive and gasping for air, thinking that you don't have any air left to breathe, and you could flip the fucking switch on that and turn that into enjoyment and right. lessons and learning and fucking fun, like literally having fun. Like that was right. fun. You had fun. Like think that you're, you're, you're the impenetrable. Whole, the whole week was fun. Like it was, 
that's why I have a shitty grin on my face from ear to ear because every I knew it, man. It's like I don't know. I'd see I'd see the little videos or whatever. And it just looked fucking amazing, and there there was that little voice in the back of my head that was like, Nah, you're a fucking pussy. You you wouldn't be able to get through something like that. You wouldn't. You know my own voice. Mm-hmm. That voice, that that itch, that scratch, whatever whatever you want to call it, is effectively gone now. Not only is it gone, but it's been replaced with a voice that says, you can actually do more. You can go harder That's than it. what the project That's it. was. That's it. You can do more. Exactly. Right. Find the next thing now. What can right. I do even harder, more extreme? Exactly. I like it. Good stuff. Good stuff. So how, how is the project now since you've graduated? What are some of the, the lessons that you immediately got out of it that you took home and started implementing right away? Like some of the, the immediate lessons, like didn't even take time. It's just like you took this home with you. And fucking implement it and plug it into your life right away. The um, what, like the first, the first big thing for me was um, my relationship with my wife, the communication. And Bedros was was talking about how you know he kind of laid out the the, the blueprint. And um, I know you talk a lot about it on social media too about um, like time blocking, like mm-hmm. making time blocks, right? And and being very disciplined and organized, right? Um, I started implementing that with my wife first. No, like no, nobody else, nobody else, because my kids have always had my time block. They've mm-hmm. always been the most important yeah. thing in my life. That's why I fucking live is for them. You know what I mean? But I think over the last 10 years, my son is 10. My daughter, it will be four on 420, which is pretty appropriate. Um, but like the last 10 years, I, I she's kind of been, you know what I mean? Like it's kind of been the the husband wife relationship kind of got pushed to the side, I mm-hmm. guess you could say, because all of our focus was on the kids. You know what I mean? And so we kind of lost track of not, not trying to be all fucking fluffy and shit. Like we lost track of each other like this, but <laughs> reality says we did though. You know what I mean? Yeah, in, yeah. The, in the real fucking world, we were so focused on our kids, raising our kids that we forgot how to fucking take time for ourselves and do the things that we need to do to keep our relationship functional. So those are the things that I went, took back home mm-hmm. and implemented with her and it's changed our relationship as well. You know what I mean? Our communication's better. And it's all just by renewing that, that I guess, fire, I guess you could say, you know what I mean? And really say, look, we focus on our kids so much. Let's focus on us too. We don't have to stop focusing on our kids to focus on us as well. You just use the same skills and habits right. you did with your kids and use it right. there. Don't fucking make it rocket science. Just implement it. Implement it into your fucking daily discipline and, and your daily routine. You know what I mean? So that was that was the first immediate impact um, that I saw and that I implemented from the project. Good stuff. So, And what are some of the longer term stuff that you kind of realize after the moment, <laughs> you know, months later, weeks later that, that weren't immediate and then afterwards you're like, Oh shit, this is this is why we did it this way. There is so much information, so many lessons during the week that I'm still I, I still, you know, crack my battle book open and I'm like, I need to go back to this one. Like there'll be a lesson that I completely forgot about that mm. we even had. And I'm like, fuck, I need to go back to this one. Um the um red, green, blue mindset. Right. Um, being military, we were always taught, you know, mindset white, mindset black. And then you mm-hmm. got yellow, red, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, but the project kind of simplified that for me and just blue, you're gone. Right. Green, you're 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 functional. Right. Red, you're gone. And you need to come as close to those waves as you can. Getting as close to fucking red as you can, but staying green. That way you're not completely fucking lost. Um, because like during, you know, during the project, I would go red, especially when we were doing combatives, mm-hmm. I'd go red. Um, I think you had to take me down once <laughs> as well that I remember <laughs> because it was like, whoa, 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 like you get too crazy. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, but that's, again, um, I, I needed the project to help me with that kind of shit. And I've, I've, I've gotten better. I've gotten better with it. Going, staying green, getting as close to red as I can. But and you're talking about, because you, this is our language, we understand what you're saying, but just out for anyone watching out there, you're talking about just controlling your emotions. Right, right, right. Being in control of your emotions, oh. the way you react, overreact. The ED. Yeah, yeah. The ED. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> controlling your damn emotions. That's right. Exactly. That's right. 
good good stuff. So let's let's stay on that. On that, we're kind of go off of that. And how how is having this brotherhood? I'm I'm sure you have some type of brotherhood in the fire department, but how is the brotherhood of this project? Because now you have all different ages, all different areas of the country and even the world, different professions that you now have as kind of a support system, a built-in support system. How has that impacted your life, just being part of the, the Project Brotherhood? There's, there's, there's one story in particular um, that we both know about. But first, you know, the Brotherhood. So when I was in the Navy, right, I was too stupid to be a Navy SEAL. I scored too low my mechanical comprehension got fucking sent to the fleet. And I was like, fuck. Cause I was like the only reason I went into the fucking Navy. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, got to the fleet, found out about the, the, uh, non-compliant visit board search and seizure teams, the VBSS latched onto that. So I was, I, I did that for four years of my five years of active duty. Um, luckily I got into that. Um, now, for the 24 of us, the brotherhood was very fucking tight knit, like very tight knit. We hung out off duty, like our families knew each other, like mm -hmm. we were real fucking tight. Um, as far as like the commands that we were attached to, there was there was com some camaraderie there, but it was more like the fire department camaraderie. Like it's there, but it's there more in like, I don't know, like sections. It's not, it's not a department wide, like mm -hmm. we're fucking super tight. Whereas the MDK brotherhood, Man, I mean, guys don't even fucking know each other and are super fucking tight. And I, I, I guess it's because we all know, not only do we all go through the project together, right? Not, not together. You know what I'm saying? Together as in like yeah, we all went common. through the same thing, yeah, you have, right? You can relate to it. Um, different classes, same, same, mm -hmm. essentially the same thing. Um, but like, you know, you don't even fucking know somebody and, and, you're, and you're super tight. And I think it's because um, we all know like... <sighs> Like, I don't know you, but I know you. Like, I know what your your morals, like, I, I, I get where you're coming from. Like, I know that for another MDK, you're going to go above and beyond and fucking lend a hand whenever you can with whatever that person needs. Which then brings me to the special um, situation that happened to me. Uh, my brother-in-law got out of prison. And six years ago, before he got out, he... Um, gave up his U.S. citizenship. That way he could get out of prison, which we were like, don't, what the fuck are you doing, right? Mm -hmm. But he did it. Hey, he did it. I've never been in prison for 23 years. I don't know. I don't know what it'd be like to have that deal on the table and be like, hey, bro, you sign that, you're fucking I might, out. I might have to sign it. <laughs> I may have to fucking sign it and go live in fucking Maui, Maui or some shit for the rest of my life, you know? So he gets out and we're like, fuck, we got to get out to California to see him. Of course, because of all this fucking COVID-19 bullshit, you can't come to California and get a hotel unless you're staying for 14 plus days. Okay, well, that wasn't feasible for us to come out here and mm -hmm. fucking yeah, self-quarantine for 14 fucking days. So it was like, you know what? I don't know how the fuck we're going to do this. Hey, let's put the MDK Brotherhood to the test. It was essentially me testing the MDK Brotherhood, right? Mm -hmm. I needed help, right? I needed help. Well... We always talk about how we're there for each other, right? Let me, let's see. So I put a, I put a uh, video out on our uh, top secret Facebook group, right? And the fucking outreach that I got was far and wide. And I'm talking within like 20 minutes. It was minutes because I got to that video. Ray called me like 20 minutes after I posted the video. I got to the video. It couldn't have been more than a half hour. And yeah. I was watching the video and it wasn't even done. I just commented, you got a place to stay here. You, and this is during Christmas. I you, know you, you were going to be there during Christmas. Yep. And I didn't go and tell my wife. I didn't go ask, say, hey, we're going to have four strangers living at our house right. during Christmas. Didn't even tell her. I just right. saw it. Didn't even finish it. Put it on there. Little do I know, I look afterwards and you're like, it's already taken care of. And I was like, yeah. Not even 30 minutes. I mean, yeah, it didn't, it didn't even take, it didn't even take a, a, an hour. Literally, it took about 35, 40 minutes, maybe. And you and graduated 005. Yes. The, the guy who got you first was, was 001. One. Yep. And so you guys must know each other for a while. You knew each other before. You never, made, never met each other. And he's... Didn't even, I didn't even know the guy. Didn't even know him. Like, and, fuck he, it. and he reached out to me. Hey, hey, bro, I live in LA. I got... XYZ hookup on Air, Airbnb, dude, I can get you a full weekend for like a hundred something a night. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding? Like, mm -hmm. it was so unreal that it was like, are you fucking serious? So I call him and now we're like, we're tight. 
You know what I mean? We've still never met, but we're tight. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, he knows me, I know him. You know what I mean? Like I said, we never met. But that's kind of the... That's like what the MDK Brotherhood does. And I've always known what it's about. And you said it put it to the test. And it it did. And that was another level of it. I remember that happening. And it was like huge for me. I'm like, what we're we're fucking creating here is like, there's a dude from a fucking two years ago that graduated. Another dude that just graduated now never met each other. And basically, he would have even welcomed you into his own home if he had to. Never met, met you. He wouldn't have had to go talk to his wife. Like the men out there, I have to go talk to my wife to see if I'm allowed to go do this boot camp class with with these other men because I'm a fucking a weak leader, a weak, not being a good father, not not taking care of my wife the right way. So I need to go ask my wife if I can go do this thing that's going to help me, and she's going to tell me no because she already thinks I'm a fucking loser. Like I'm getting off, tan- I'm getting off it because I'm just thinking of all the men that we talk to every day. But he didn't even need to talk to his wife because. He's been through the project. Right. If he never been through the project, he would have, oh, I would need to t- talk to my wife. And then she'll be like, fuck no. But you know what? She'll trust his decision making. He doesn't need to do it because he knows she's going to trust his decision making right. from the experiences, the skill set that he got from coming through the project. So exactly. like that, I, that story was like, and I tell that story all the time. I, I fucking send out unreal, emails. It's, it's a fucking awesome story. It, it's like exactly what the product is all about, about. Having mm-hmm. that. It's, it's fucking awesome. It is. So. Uh, on that on that note, what what would you say to um, a man that's in your your shoes when you first were realizing, all right, I need to do something like this right now. I know I need to do it. I don't know if my wife's going to be on board. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. You're having all these fears and these doubts. You, the little bitch is in your ear saying, I don't know if you're good enough to even do this. I don't know if you're worth it. I don't know if you're worthy enough to do this. What would you say to someone that's in those same shoes as you were back then, you know, a few months ago? <laughs> I, I mean, you know. I guess, I guess fucking like Nike, just do it. You know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't, man, the advice, it's, 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 it's kind of a hard question. Cause it's like, I, you know, I don't know where to begin because I, I me, I've never been, I've never been, you know, worried about, because again, like we talked about, like my wife knew, she knew as soon as I told her, Hey, check this out. You know, she's like, so when are you going? Because she fucking knows, you know what mm-hmm, I mean? Like mm-hmm. she's she's got my fucking back. She's a warrior, her fucking self, you know what I mean? Like, um, to me, it's like just just stop making fucking excuses. Um, in the illustrious words of Freak Steve, no excuses. It's right there, and, so I never and, forget it. <laughs> and and just fucking get it done. I mean, I got it done. I'm a poor firefighter from New Mexico. No <laughs> you shit. know what I mean? No shit. And I got it done. You know, take a fucking loan out if you have to. It's it's worth it. It's worth it. You can afford a fucking loan, you know. Um, I did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm living proof that you don't have to be a fucking hundred thousand there <laughs> or some fucking, you know, rich human being to go through the project. You don't. All you got to do is need it, want it. That need fucking it bad. Fucking figure it out. FIO, figure it out on the way. That's it. As you're going. Good stuff. So you're here, obviously, you, you took time away from your family for a, pretty much an entire week to come out here just to help out with this class tomorrow. So we appreciate you helping out with that. Absolutely. What, what are a couple pieces of advice you'd have for that group that's about to start tomorrow or just any other men that are going through a fucked up day that need to figure out how to get through the day? What, what's some piece of advice you'd have for this group that you're going to be helping out with tomorrow? Uh, like, like what I said earlier, what's your life worth? What is it worth? What is it worth? Um, personally, for me, Um, during our week, um, in class 006, the quit, the quit voice for me was never there. Um, I do remember a time I, of course we don't have watches. We don't know what fucking time it is. We kind of guesstimate, right? Mm -hmm. It was some in the middle of the fucking night. It's cold, about 40 degrees cold. Um, we're wet as fuck, right? We're tired and we get, you know, a couple minutes to go take a piss real quick. And I'm standing in the fucking porta potty. I'm dripping. I'm dripping wet. And I remember saying to myself, I could see, right? I could see, like I, I could see why somebody would be like, you know what? Why am I doing this to myself? I just want to go home and fucking have hot chocolate and put my fucking slippers on or whatever. <laughs> and fucking, I could picture you sitting with your little fuzzy slippers and. I got them at the house. I got them <laughs> at the house. But you got to put the fuck out to earn that shit. You know what I mean? Be ready. So it was the middle of the night, cold and wet yeah. on the and, piss break. We had that little thought about understand how people could do it. So I, now I'm going to take, right, I always take notes. Right. I always tell them. Now I know when, when to really go all in on these dudes tomorrow is cold, wet, middle of the night. Yep. Done. Done. 
and fucking make them. See, at some point, see, I kept telling the guys, too, when we'd be by ourselves and, and the instructors aren't around, hey, it doesn't fucking matter what they do, right? I've always had this good understanding, right? I don't, I don't, I don't look forward. I'm not looking forward to Friday. It's fucking Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We're already getting hammered on. I'm not looking to Friday. I'm not thinking about a fucking steak dinner. I'm thinking about what the fuck do I have to do two feet in front of me to smash the evolution that we're going through right now? What do I have to do? Find it. Mm -hmm. Fucking find it. Kiss, right? The kiss principle, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it fucking simple. Put one foot in front of the other, right? I was doing great. Six hours in, smashing people, all this other stuff, doing great, right? Guys are like, oh, he's number one, woohoo, right? Everybody's riding on, on my shit, right? All of a sudden, we get to the fucking pit, and guess who's the slowest motherfucker in the pit? Me, big old Dumbo, right? Slogging through like, the pit. This is the, one of the worst <laughs> fucking crawlers I've ever seen. Oh, what I, the fuck? Hey, it was bad. I'm glad this building's not on fire because you're bad. fucking roasting. <laughs> That's why, hey, but... I had PPE on when that's going on, all right? That's unfair. No. <laughs> but, yeah, the crawling shit kicked my ass. Crawling with a sledge, I don't know what the fuck it was. I don't know if you need some kind of special fucking coordination for that shit. I don't have it. I don't have it. So, I mean, I'm just like, hey, put one in front of the fucking other. It doesn't matter how. Don't look pretty. You don't have to look fucking pretty. Just get it done. And I remember Bedros coming up, and he's like, Mr. White, I think we found your kryptonite. Right, because you've been kicking fucking ass like the entire time. Now all of a sudden we get to the pit. You look like shit. I think we found your kryptonite. Looks like it, sir. But I'm gonna keep going. He goes, "Are you sure you don't want to quit?" I said, "I will fucking crawl back to New Mexico through this fucking pit <laughs> if I have to. If that means I'm gonna graduate, because that's where my mind was. It didn't matter what was gonna happen to me." And you made it there literally one step of an arm at a time. At a, at a time. You knew the goal of, okay, goal is obviously Friday. That's still the goal out there, but that's mm. not what you're focusing on. Not right in front of me. Front think about that. That's in life. That's a, that's a lesson for life right there, right exactly. there. That's like gold right there. Focus on the moment that you're in right now. Focus on this fucking interview. That's focus it. on whatever task at hand, and that's where you're going to fucking dominate. That's where right. you're going to get. You're never going to get to the other thing if you start looking past it. Right. So right there is just, boom, right there is fucking a golden nugget there to t to in life in general. Focus on the present. And most people don't do that, I don't think. They don't focus on the present moment. They don't focus on the time they're with their kids, right? Oh. Playing on their fucking phone, tweeting and all this other bullshit. When, shit when irritates me. When they're supposed to be hanging out with their kids and playing with their kids. That and shit fucking irritates that's not, shit. That's not presence. That's no. it. All right, good stuff. So I, I appreciate you taking the time out of, your, out of your life and away from your family and kids to come help out. And I'm excited for the the next level of growth that you're actually going to have this week from now seeing it from another I'm perspective. Super excited. It's going to be fucking awesome for yep. you. Just as awesome or even more awesome than when you're actually doing it yourself. I'm super excited. So thanks for coming. Yes, sir. Thank and you. if you've got any bits of inspiration, any way that this ha can possibly help you to become an even better father, an even better husband, an even better entrepreneur, leader, or an even better man, just like, subscribe to the channel, send a comment, share this video with your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your enemies. Let me know if you need anything. Put some questions, comments down below. Let's talk about it. We can see if you are a good fit for the project. We can hop on the phone, see if you're qualified, see if you have what the fuck it takes to become a modern day knight. I will talk to you soon. You are fucking awesome. No excuses.